Welcome to the program. I'm Mark Imperial. This segment's being brought to you by booksgrowbusiness.com. It's the place where professionals and entrepreneurs publish to grow their businesses and to leave a legacy. We're doing a series of business spotlight interviews on remarkable businesses and professionals across the country and in your town, of course. Joining me today from Jackson, Mississippi, and now serving people all over the globe virtually is Melissa Banks. She's the founder of DMD Event Planning and Design. Melissa, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. Melissa, tell us all about DMD Event Planning and Design and the types of folks that you specialize in helping. Okay, wonderful. Um, DMD Event Planning Design started about 20 years ago, and the goal was simply to do some decorating. You know, I had a love for doing flower arrangements and things like that, and that's what kicked off my business. Um, over the years, it's developed. At that time, more of my clients were church members and family and friends. And then I discovered the wonderful world of wedding planning, and the world has never been the same since. We do all types of weddings and anniversary celebrations. And as the years developed, we began to do other types of events as well, like corporate events and brand lunches and birthday parties. So it's a wonderful world, different types of celebrations. And I just tell people, that's what we do. We create celebrations. Before we came on the air, we were having a conversation because we're taping here in the midst of a pandemic. And I know that it's affected the event industry and the milestone celebrations industry greatly. Tell us what that looked like for you when the whole country shut down. What do events and weddings look like today? Okay, awesome. Well, in January of 2020, we began what was to be our biggest year in our 20 year um, history. And then March happened and the world changed forever. Within weeks, our books went from completely full to completely empty. So then we had to figure out how can we pivot in this time and still survive? You know, the industry wasn't looking good, nor was our business. And what we did was we learned and got trained in virtual events. That's what became what we had to do for now. But I wanted to also make virtual events an experience, not just sitting in front of the computer. So we had to get creative with ways that we can engage the audience, we can get them involved. We did things like having gifts arrive at their house right when the event was to start. Now, or we sent them all the fixings for a cocktail and we all had one at the same time. So we got really creative and that really took off. So we've done product lunches, celebrations, parties, all virtual. I'll tell you what, life is about celebrating moments and milestones. So you, you have to be creative. And that sounds like a wonderful start. I want to find out definitely more about virtual events. But before I ask you those questions, you mentioned that in your area, in Jackson, Mississippi, they're still allowing small groups and small events. Is that right? Are you doing uh, still doing live in person, but smaller events? What does that look like? Well, we can do small indoor events for 20 people or less. Or you can do a small outdoor event for 50 people or less. Our company was known for larger events. So we have not done a whole lot of face-to-face. -face. Most of our events have been virtual or even hybrid. We did an event recently that we had a, a small group of about 50 people on site. And then we had a virtual component where the rest of the people were virtually. So that's been able to work in this area. I love the sound of hybrid. When I was in the industry with my entertainment company, I was like the first, one of the first entertainers that was the hybrid of the DJ MC and a live band behind us. Like we innovated that. So hybrid, I, I was thinking that as you said it, a hybrid event where you have that small group of 20, but you're still broadcasting to the world. It sounds fantastic. So now let, let's talk, Melissa, about these virtual events. Tell us like, What's the evolution of that? Like, what, what was the, your first event like and, and what did it become after that? Okay, so the first virtual event that we, we actually did, and I have to back up just a minute. When we went into this pivot process, um, I, I participated in a program that David Tutera sponsored along with the Event Planners Association. And that's what opened up the idea for virtual events. I'm actually being mentored by David Tutera right now. So it's, it's broadened my my uh, vision. So our first virtual event was a small product launch 
for um, for authors that a client was was producing. And she contacted us. I did a little video and showing how you could do a virtual wedding and gave some ideas about virtual weddings. And that's kind of what kicked it off. So what we did was we got some speakers together. We, we got games. We did games while they that they can answer that they actually can win prizes. People love free stuff. I don't care whether it's virtual or face-to-face. -face. And in that event though, even though it wasn't a really big event, but what I learned from that event was people want to have fun even in this season. And if you engage them and make it personal to them, they have a great experience. And for me, it's all about the experience. Tell me about some of the fun new elements that you're creating. You mentioned a, a couple of things like actually shipping uh, the cocktail hour items to the, to the guest list. Tell us more about that. Okay. What we did was we, this was for, uh, one of the events we did this for was for a brand launch for uh, um, automation company. That's her specialty. And she had VIP clients that had registered for her event, right? So we put together these beautiful gold boxes and inside the boxes, we put everything they needed to make the signature cocktail for the drink. We even included the glass to put it in there with it and a treat. So we delivered the box to the house with a note, do not open until event time. At event time, we got to open it up. Everybody fixed their cocktail and had a toast to the event, to launching the brand right there together. We had music, we even had a DJ that we um, piped into the event. So that was fun. People loved having the DJ and the dance and lights presentations. So it was like they were, we were all in one place and we fixed that cocktail and had it together to celebrate that brand lunch. That sounds terrific. You know, you know, so many people today, they're so used to like getting on Zoom now with their kids for education. Is it is it simple? Like if somebody really wanted to have a celebration, maybe considering a virtual wedding or a virtual event for their company, how daunting is the technology? How easy is it? And, and when they work with you, how uh, how do you handle it and make it easy for them? Oh, wow. It is. OK, let me just tell you that when I started this virtual experience for myself, I was afraid of technology. So in my business, if it had anything to do with technology, I handed it off to someone. This experience and this season taught me I had to get trained and I had to learn and I had to find the simplest ways to do things and get the best results. So everything that we do in events is very simple. Everybody can participate in it. I can tell you, we did a wedding that we did all the planning virtually. We had the venue visit where there was a tour through the venue we watched virtually. So as I got each client through the process, each step, everything was done virtually. She didn't miss out on anything, nor did her guests. It's very simple. Zoom is, to me, the easiest and was the best way to do some things. We did use one other platform and one virtual event called StreamYard. And that was my first experience with StreamYard, but it was it was basically pretty simple as well. But we do everything else in, in Zoom. I remember Zoom was around for a while. I was using another platform for webinars and teleseminars before, and I kind of ignored Zoom. But then when I found that it was becoming so popular for uh, everybody in the in the mm -hmm. country with with their kids' school and that. That's when I decided, well, now everyone's going to know how to use Zoom. So now we can just easily use this platform and I don't have to teach people anything from scratch anymore. Right. Right. So it's actually been been kind of a blessing. So, Melissa, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started. Like what inspired you to even create an a, a event planning and design company? You, you told us a little bit. Give us more. Okay. I had my background was. I worked for a major technology company here in our local area. I had been with that company for almost 12 years and the company had a huge layoff. In fact, that particular day, there was over 3000 people laid off in one day nationwide with that company. And when I was leaving out of there, I had no idea what I was going to do with my life. And when I sat in my car in tears and, and afraid of what was going to happen to me, I, I heard this voice that said, you will start your own business. What did that mean? I had no idea. I didn't grow up around people who own their own businesses. So I didn't know what that meant, but I knew what I liked. And I liked making flower arrangements and decorating people's homes for Christmas and holidays and parties. I did that for friends and I had did it for years. 
So for me, that meant that's what I was going to do. I didn't know how, but I knew that was what I was going to do. And I began my business de to decorate, to sell flower arrangements. That's how I did my business. My first wedding, I did everything myself. I had no idea to get a team or to get anybody to help me. I did it all by myself with my mother, who was my hostess at the door. And that opened up a whole new world for me. I left that wedding. I couldn't walk. I made no money because I didn't know how to charge her. So I didn't charge her right. <laughs> so I made no money, but I knew I was in a world that I was supposed to be in. And I still have that passion in my spirit for what I do right now, creating wonderful experiences for the couples and the clients that I work with. That's a wonderful story. And I, and you can tell that you have passion for it. And when you're when you're passionate about it, it's going to just turn out phenomenal. You'll have a fabulous business and you'll finally figure out how to, you know, uh, charge that client That's and right. put some food on the table too and, and uh, you know, grow your staff. So, <laughs> Melissa, this is terrific. For folks listening now that have been considering maybe a virtual event because now you can serve people around the globe uh, or if they're near your area in Jackson, Mississippi or in other areas that you serve when this country finally opens back up, um, how can people connect with you and learn more? Where do they find you? Okay, awesome. We do have a website and it's dmdeventplanninganddesign.com. And we are also, of course, on social media. And you can find us at DMD Event Planning on Facebook and DMD Event Planning on Instagram. Melissa, this has been terrific. I loved hearing your story and I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to share with my audience. I wish you continued success for, for you and for all of your clients. Thank you so much. This was so much fun sharing with you today. Thank you for having me. That was Melissa Banks, founder of DMD Event Planning and Design. This segment's been brought to you by booksgrowbusiness.com. It's the place where professionals and entrepreneurs publish to grow their businesses and to leave a legacy. That's all for now. Join me next time for my next expert spotlight. I'm Mark Imperial.